Now I've been doing an awful lot of local photography lately, which isn't surprising given the lockdown we've all been subject to, but I have become a bit lazy. I mean, you may have seen on some of my recent videos, I've been out into the forest and I've been shooting uh, fairly predictably. You know, I've got a mix of lenses, a wide angle, a, a standard lens and a short telephoto, and I'm familiar with using those in that setting. So I thought what I needed to do was, was to give myself a bit of a challenge to uh, shake things up a little bit. And to do that, I thought I would take just one lens. Now, had I taken my standard 80 millimeter lens, that would mean nothing on a medium format camera because that's my most used lens. So I decided to take my longest lens for my Bronica medium format camera. It's a bit of a, like a bazooka really for taking out tanks. Uh, and this is the 250 millimeter Zenzanon S. Uh, absolutely lovely piece of glass. Rarely do I carry this though, because it weighs an absolute ton and it takes up most of the camera bag. And also the focal length is equivalent to 135 millimeters. So that's not your ideal landscape photography lens. It's got no flexibility. It's not a zoom. It's a fixed focal length lens. So anyway, I thought, yeah, that's going to be a challenge. And just to make things a little bit more difficult still, I thought I would take a film notorious for its difficulty, and that's uh, Fuji Velvia. This is the original Velvia, by the way. Still got a stash of that, thanks to my friend Robin. And that is very fickle. It has very, very low exposure latitude, probably about uh, what, four stops or so. And it's also very, very difficult to scan well. It, it's a it's a tricky film, but it's absolutely beautiful as well. And I also thought, make it even more difficult, no bracketing. Every single shot I will take will be a one-off. I'm not going to bracket, I'm not going to overexpose and underexpose. If I don't nail it with the Fuji Velvia on the first shot with the, uh, the bazooka, then uh, yeah, it's not going to work. So I set off and I had a little trip down to my local canal. So have a look at the video and see what you think. Okay, I'm down by the canal side. Uh, it's going to be very warm this morning. There's a very murky looking sky. And I'm not feeling very confident, I'll be honest, in my choice of the 250mm lens. But, you know, I'm going to have to just uh, keep my eyes open and change my way of thinking. Right, I have got my first image in the bag, I'm very pleased to say. Uh, yes, I've got the, uh, the big lens, obviously, the only lens with me. And I am shooting, it's really just the uh, far side of the canal bank with some trees and a little bit of mist. It's very simple, not very special. Exposure-wise, uh, Velvia 50, or Velvia, the original Velvia this is. And I've rated it at 40 because it is a little bit dark if you rate it at 50. It needs a bit more exposure. And that was coming out at 15 seconds and accounting for the reciprocity failure and that extra uh, third of a stop. I had an exposure of 37 seconds, very small dynamic range. But as I said, I'm not affording myself the luxury of bracketing as I normally would. So um, fingers crossed. Okay, another one in the bag, I'm glad to say, only about uh, ooh, 100 yards from the last one. Uh, very, very simple again. Well, it has to be with this lens. I have got these reeds growing, uh, grasses, rushes, and a little bit of a backdrop of some very verdant trees. So everything's excluded apart from the, the, the foliage, the vegetation. Uh, F8, two seconds, what can you say? Well, I have managed to get a, a shot of some of this beautiful vegetation at the side of the canal, despite the close focusing issues of this lens. Now, when I say close focusing, you know, you're talking here in miles. I mean, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. I'm right on the canal bank and the foliage I'm photographing is at the minimum focus distance for this lens. Now, it's just filling the frame, obviously. 
with this beautiful verdant foliage. It's superb colours. Um, quite a simple composition, but I wanted to get some full leaves in, in the shot so there's no sort of uh, cutting on the main subject. And again, F16, two seconds. There's a tiny bit of reciprocity there, but I'm not going to account for it because the dynamic range is so short, it'll easily absorb it within the four stop range of the film. Now at last, what I hoped would happen today is starting to happen, and that's I'm starting to use my brain. I'm not relying on the standard landscape type shots, which just aren't working with this long lens. Now, I mentioned in the last shot that the close focus range was absurd. You know, you can measure it in, uh, in miles. What I have brought with me though today is a little screw on, eh, a little screw on plus two close up lens. Now that's allowing me to get very, very close to this vegetation. Uh, a little bit too close, I can't get it all in focus. I'm, I'm stopped down on this little plant here. And some of it's still out of focus, but I don't care because the background has just gone completely out of focus. A beautiful, smooth backdrop. And it looks quite different. It's not something I usually shoot, but uh, I think that's why I've come out today with this lens. It's making me use my head and not rely on the old favorites. Okay, so although I wasn't using the lens at 250 millimeters there, really, that close-up uh, filter gave me a lot more flexibility. It's not a shot I would have taken had I brought any of my other cameras or lenses. I don't shoot that sort of material. And that makes me a bit limited, I think, sometimes, because there is beauty everywhere in the countryside. And sometimes we just need to focus a little bit closer. I'm not a huge macro fan, but... Uh, I must admit, this is being really useful this morning for my general photography. Right, getting back to using the lens in its full 250mm uh, glory, no close-ups now. Um, I have taken a shot of the far side of the canal bank. Very easy, just f11, half a second. Metering straightforward, there's only about a one stop of dynamic range in there, but I do like the way that there's a couple of trees just framing the top of the image and there's some vegetation in there. A little bit of a white plant and also a little bit of purple just as a little highlight. Uh, it's nothing special but it works particularly well in the square format. Well, I think I'm really pushing the limits here of, of any film, of any sensor. Shooting directly into the sun, the sun is in the frame. Um, well, what can I say? I've whacked on some graduated filters. There's about, uh, about five stops of uh, neutral density at the top of the frame. 60 to the second at f11. It's got to be worth a go, hasn't it? Well, I don't think I'm going to get anything else in this blinding sunlight. I've not used the whole roll. I think I've taken about eight shots, a cocked one exposure up. But all in all, pretty useful, just over two hours. So let's get back, have a look in Lightroom, obviously get them developed, get them scanned first and see what I've got. So I do hope you enjoyed that. I really did have a blast. It was very, very enjoyable. Now, uh, it didn't go perfectly as I, as I stated on the video, uh, but however, I was very pleased with the results from the film. And the reason is I nailed nearly all the exposures. Now I did get one completely wrong, 
because I set the dial on the Bronica to half a second instead of two seconds because it's easily done. Uh, therefore one was uh, massively underexposed, however I realised that as I shot it and I retook the image. Uh, I'll show you on the light box while I'm waffling on the, uh, the slides so you can actually see truthfully that this is the film I shot and I've not uh, told you a pack of porkies and bracketed everything and shot five films and make it look like I'm really good because I'm not. So yes, I really enjoyed using the 250mm lens. I also really enjoyed using that little uh, little accessory uh, close-up lens. Yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. That's the plus two. Uh, the plus one gets you a little bit further back. It's probably more practical, but I couldn't find it. So uh, even more difficult to use. I really, really enjoyed the trip though. I really enjoyed getting the exposure spot on. I really enjoyed the, uh, the struggle I had at first. You probably saw me struggling to get compositions with the 250 millimeter until I got into my stride and then I suddenly started thinking stop trying to you know frame your normal shots with a nice foreground and you know, a bit of background in there because it ain't going to work really go for things that need that long lens like opposite the canal bank and, and try and you know set some trees behind the reeds and and even shooting that tree at the end I mean yeah it was a bit of a look like a tobacco graduated filter from 1985 the effect but it was still a bit of experience and practice and uh, yeah it's made me more willing to experiment in future and possibly also to try going out with another lens in the future, maybe a, a real wide angle, which is uh, probably very difficult for me. I don't like wide angles. Uh, yeah, so anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I really did, it taught me a lot. I will be shooting more Velvia. I will be shooting more with uh, a single limited range of lenses. I've said it in the past, I think in another video, that less choice is better for your photography because you focus on the image and not the equipment. So yes, thank you for coming along and I'll see you again soon.